All right, guys, let's bring him in. Uh, season finale of sorts oh, uh, no. for Dan Miller. I mean, he's joined us every Wednesday. He, Dan. Nobody could be happier than Dan Miller. Dan. <laughs> Man, what are you doing next Wednesday? <laughs> How you doing, Dan? Oh, uh, <laughs> next Wednesday, I plan on being in a haze somewhere. <laughs> What's happening, man? Up. Hey. What's um, up, guys? So, up, uh, first and foremost, news yesterday, Ben Johnson comes back. Um, just your initial reaction to that. It's great. I mean, look, number one, if this is what Ben wants to do, I'm happy for Ben. I was all for him getting a job if one came his way and that's what he wanted to do i'm a big fan of his obviously he's done great things for this organization and getting to sit down with him you know many times over the last couple of years has been great uh he's a top-notch guy he's a top-notch coach and uh if he doesn't feel like this is the time that's a win for detroit because uh that offense is humming it has been humming for two years and you just don't know exactly what you're going to get when you switch offensive coordinators, if they'll have the same, you know, vibe with Jared Goff and feel for this team like he does. So, um, look, if it's uh, first and foremost for him, great, do what you want. But for the Lions, man, I think that was uh, took some of the sting out of Sunday because I think people could then say, OK, that's a good thing. Let's start moving towards getting better next year. Doesn't mean you don't hurt anymore, but I think it was kind of therapeutic for people to say, all right, there's some good news here. You know, for the Lions organization, it feels like honesty is such uh, an appropriate word for that organization because that's uh, a big part of their culture. They're honest with each other. They're honest with the players. They're honest with the coaches. And they're honest with themselves. And, and uh, maybe Ben Johnson just said, hey, I could use another year to get to the right situation. Do you think that's possible? It's possible, Ryan. I don't know. Look, he's 37 years old. He's been a coordinator for two years. Um, he's had a very fast rise. I know he likes it here. His family likes it here. It's a comfortable situation. He's working for a guy that he loves. That, like, these coaches love working for Dan Campbell. Uh, he's got a lot of leeway to do things the way he wants to do it. I'm sure he is well paid. And while Adam Schefter reported yesterday they didn't sweeten anything, my, my guess is they probably will. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of things to like about this. But I would say that just reading the tea leaves from last year and this year, both of which he pulled himself out, it's family, it's current situation, and it's probably just he real, realizes that things are really good here and there is some value in sticking around for another year, seeing how far you can take this and continuing to gain experience. Hey, Dan, uh, a happy belated birthday, man. I got a chance to quote tweet Ryan last week on your birthday, man. So definitely send you a shout out. Appreciate you. Well Thanks, Brandon. Deserved, my guy. Uh, I'll spare you from talking about Sunday. I think everybody's talked about Sunday to their blue in the face. Should you, should you have not, what happened, blah, blah, blah. I'll get into the offseason. Looking at this Detroit Lions roster, a lot of moves are going to have to be made. A lot of people are going to have to be paid. What do you think is the first three moves the Detroit Lions should be thinking about? Not make, but necessarily be thinking about. Well, you, you do have to work out some contracts here. Obviously, you got to start looking at Amon Ra. You got to start looking at Goff. You got to start looking at Panay. Um, the, the contracts for the guys that you know are cornerstones for the team. You have to start looking at them. I don't know what the situation with Jono Jackson is. I don't know if they're going to be able to afford to pay four guys on that offensive yeah. line, which is in essence what they'd be doing. Um, so, look, what uh, Jonah's. It's a stud, man, and one, and one of my favorite guys in there. And whatever happens, I hope it works out well for him. I just there, there's dollars and there's dollars that make sense, and they may think on a cap it doesn't. Doesn't make you a better football team to let Jonah Jackson walk out the door, but sometimes those are the tough decisions you have to make. I would love to wake up and see a headline that says he's coming back. We'll have to wait and see what happens there. But contracts aside, guys, look, you got to fix that defense. First thing you yeah. got to do is figure out the offensive line. Figure yeah. out okay, who'd you lose? that's the strength of your team. Get that thing, make sure it's right. You got to fix that defense. You got to find somebody else that can rush the passer. I think both from the edge and another guy that can rush the passer from the interior. It's easier said than done, but if you're asking me what you need to do, I think that's it. Then you got to start looking at that cornerback position. Um, it is thin and it need, they're going to need multiple guys at corner to come in here. And I think you're going to need to probably spend money to get a veteran at one of those spots. 
and then maybe some young guys after that. And look, it didn't work out the way that they thought it would in the secondary this year. They thought they'd have CJ for the whole year. They thought they'd have Mosley. Those two things didn't work out, obviously. So uh, the positives, Belafonwu came on. You know he's a piece to the puzzle. Kirby's going to be back. Uh, so there, there's some pieces there that you can see, but you have to tighten up that pass defense. That's up front, and that's in the secondary. I do believe in some ways they lived a bit of a charmed life here with the number of chunk plays they were given up and that they were able to survive it. I don't know if that's sustainable really over a long haul and going to next year. Now you got the opportunity to go out there and fix some things. During the season, you're trying to hide things, trying to make up for things. So, uh, look, Brad Holmes, Dan Campbell, they, they know what they're doing, and I think that's probably one thing that gives fans a lot of faith in what's going on is these guys have been good at reading the situation and improving the team. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. You know, that bend but don't break, it can only go so far. I believe in that San Francisco 49ers game at the end, it did break. Uh, you brought up a player. You brought up Jared Goff. How interesting and hard is this conversation going to be with golf and Detroit Lions? Because there's a lot of, there's a lot of, there's a lot to, to unpack, if you will, in terms of the extension. I'm thinking something along the lines of Geno Smith, but I could be wrong. In terms of how Seattle paid him. Well, I, I think golf has more of a track record than Geno Smith. Golf has led a team in LA to a Super Bowl, won playoff games there. Came here, found his game, found a comfort level, won two playoff games, yeah. was a whisker away from going back. I, I, I think there's more of a track record there. Look, I think he's going to get paid. Like okay. He's going to be one of the top paid quarterbacks in the NFL. He's going to make 45 to 50 million bucks somewhere in there. And then over the next couple of years, other guys are going to get paid and he'll go from whatever, top four or five to eight, nine or ten. That's just how it works. But I, I just... What he's done, he's earned it. I mean, this is a top offense. He is statistically a top quarterback. This is a team that went deep into the playoffs. This is a team that won a division. I mean, at the most important position, he has helped lead this team to something, guys, that we've only dreamed about for 30 years, winning a division. Something we only dreamed about for 32 years, winning a playoff game. Something we hadn't done since 1957, winning two games in a postseason. So, man, I understand that People would love him to be able to run a 4-4-5 and run away from defenders. He can't do that, but there's a whole lot of things he does do well. And I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of perplexed by people that say, oh, you can't pay him and you can do better elsewhere. Where? Where? Yeah. You're right. Let me clarify myself to the people out there. I didn't mean necessarily how Gino got paid and, you know, he only got paid this. And you're absolutely correct. Did way more. I meant how he got a front loaded contract for three years. And then now you got some wiggle room in year two with Gino. That's kind of more so. I said, so my apologies. I need to clear that question up. Yeah, no, no, no. And, and I, I understand what you're saying there, Braylon. And, and look, that's up to Disner and Goff's agent. And look, they've got some guys that are going to need to get paid here. They're going to need to get creative with this cap in the next couple of years. That's that's the byproduct of drafting well and developing good players. But Amon Ra is going to get top dollar. Panay is going to get top dollar yeah. when these guys get paid. So you're going to need to figure out a way to do that um, with these guys that are coming up and down the line there are others. But um, those are big time guys that are going to get paid and golf is too. So. However you do it, front load, back load, middle load, however you do it, that's above my pay grade, but you got to figure out a way to do it and still leave yourself some flexibility. Agreed. Hey, Dan, I was uh, the first one of the first guys that said I wanted to get C.J. Gardner-Johnson here. And, and the they brought, first guy. And they brought him in. He went down in week two. They didn't get, like you said, they didn't get everything out of him. Comes back week 18, just getting in football shape, basically. But he had a bad game on, on Sunday and got that 15-yard penalty. He was waving goodbye to the – to the crowd as well. Does that sit well with this team? Do you think he's back next year? Good question, and I don't know the answer to that. I, I, I don't know what they saw from him this year. I think probably the emergence of Branch and Melifonwu makes it less of an urgent situation for them because they need to look other places to spend their money in that secondary. Um, I, I just think depends on what the market holds for him as well last year obviously the market didn't work out to the to the degree that he wanted uh and he ended up here on a one-year deal um he's still a young guy uh he obviously came back off the injury he'll have a whole off season to get right um i, I maz i don't know the answer to that question i don't know where he fits in their plans i do know 
that nickel and safety where you would normally think about him, I think they feel better about those positions now than they did when they signed him. Now, depth is great. Numbers are great. Being able to roll different guys out there is great. Different formations, have him on the field with other people. This is not me talking CJ down at all. It's just saying I think that the the landscape has changed a little bit from when they signed him. I agree, but uh, you know he brings that he brings that swagger to this team, and I, don't, I haven't heard him speak ill of anybody on this team. He basically speaks ill about the other teams, but the guy's been on three teams and. Three years, so you know maybe there's something yeah. out there that that doesn't attract it. When Dan spoke yesterday, and he's like, "Doesn't matter how you know how much a player is going to get paid, how superstar he is, he's got to fit on this team." And I thought he fit. Do you think he fit? I, look, I think they knew exactly what they were getting with CJ. I mean, look, they they were with him in New Orleans. Aaron Glenn knows exactly right. what they were getting in him. I don't think anything that happened to what you're referring is a surprise. He is a guy that, you know, is going to tell you what he thinks. He's not a guy that's going to hold back. Uh, I think in some regards, that's good. I do think he gave this team some swagger, in particular during the offseason when these guys, you know, were coming off a good finish but still could use somebody to tell them how great they are. I think there were some positive things, certainly, that he did. Uh, we don't have a whole body of work to go off of. It, it, it's difficult to look at, you know, a game and a half and then – him coming back at the end where he probably, I'm guessing, didn't feel 100% like himself, like you normally would going into a late game where you'd played all year. So um, I, don't, I don't know if any of the ancillary stuff that you're talking about is a surprise to this coaching staff because they knew exactly who he is and what he brought because they brought him here. Let me tell you something. They were excited when they got him. I mean, yeah. if you heard Brad Holmes screaming and waking everybody in his house up, according to him, yeah. They were excited about getting him and bringing him in here. So I, I don't know that that I would look at, at anything that happened or, or you know, him chirping or anything as a negative. I think they understand that's who he is and that's kind of the swagger that he brings to a team. Yeah, I hope he stays. Uh, he's one of my faves. But uh, on the other hand. Come on, man. Mass, Mass, <laughs> Mass. Yeah. Yeah. How are you not asking me why Zach Ertz wasn't active? Yeah. <laughs> I was, wanna, I, wanna, I was that, I'm waiting uh, for that. That was man. his next question. Hey, listen. I'm waiting for no, that. Listen, man. I know they needed the extra offensive lineman, and they love Jason Cabinda. Okay. God forbid Jason Cabinda's got to be active. Anyway, <laughs> you know, Hutchinson got shut out. I don't know what the hell happened to him. But can you get me an effing kicker, Dan? Please get me there a kicker. Is. I was Look, waiting for I, it. I, I think that's probably something they got to look at. Obviously, in the off season, is is trying to find somebody that can nail that thing down and feel good, regardless of what happened in the NFC Championship game. Uh, you've been through several kickers now in the past couple of years. I don't know that they have one at this point that they're necessarily comfortable with. Um, they don't. I, I, I don't know that Dan Campbell. I don't know that he likes field goals very much, obviously. But I, it, look, I do think that's something that you look at in the offseason. And, and if something makes sense, it's a move that you make right. where you can feel a little more stable there. So he had the Cowboys kicker. He liked field goals. I oh, promise God. you that. Mass, it's over, oh, buddy. he's something else, isn't he? <laughs> he is. Hey, Dan, last yeah. thing. Um, one of the things that Dan Campbell was talking about, uh, too, after the game and a little bit yesterday is that, you know, each year is a new year. And what you did last year doesn't matter. Just because you're in the NFC Championship game in 24 doesn't mean you're going to be in the NFC Championship game in 25. Hell, the Dallas Cowboys last played in the NFC championship game back in 1995 he also said you learn a lot about players that go th you know 3 13 and 1 you learn a lot about players who go 14 and 6 as well what do you think this franchise what can you leave the fans with uh, just l l moving forward here the direction of of this thing uh, how like I think they're gonna win the Super Bowl next year I've said a lot of crazier things but I just think this team with everybody coming back is gonna win the Super Bowl uh, next year that that's that's my floor for this team next year uh what what are you positive about uh th this offseason and in this franchise moving forward well I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you a long answer here so you guys get comfortable um look I, I think that you know we were talking about it last night um we've seen detroit teams that have had to go through pain before they got what they wanted i, I was actually talking to fred human on his show this morning and he brought up something that, that I had been blessed to talk to Al Kaline about how 
1967 fueled 1968 because they just barely lost out in 1967 and they knew that they should have won it and that fueled 68. If you talk to Dan Petrie, he will tell you the fact that they lost it in 83 and felt like they should have won it fueled them in 1984. We know what the Wings went through, getting swept in the Stanley Cup Finals. Ozzy, as a, as a young player, you know, in that Game 7, emotional in the locker room because they had lost. They went through their tough times before they finally broke through. Pistons, Isaiah throwing the ball away, the phantom foul, all those things before they ultimately broke through. Sometimes it goes like that. Sometimes you need to be battle-tested and hardened and calloused before you can get to the point that you want to get to. Look, I think there's another side to what Dan Campbell talked about, too. Those 49ers had lost two consecutive NFC Championship games. They were in the NFC Championship game for the fourth time in five years. So you can get back. What's Kansas City? Six times in a row in the AFC Championship game? You can get back. But you know what? It, It takes that same mindset that they had this year. What you can't do is figure, okay, you got this thing. You got to roll the ball out there and you're good enough to win. You got to understand you're good enough to lose, too. And and you have to have that hunger. And I think Dan Campbell is a master at setting the tone for his team. So I have no doubt that he will have them ready to play. Um, You know, what excites me is they have a chance now to attack their weaknesses. You know, as I said, during the season, you have to hide them and do the best you can to, to not have them help lose you a game on a Sunday. Um, now they have a chance to go out there and fix them. But look, I love the character of this team. I love the way they come back ready to go. They should be hacked off right now because they had the Super Bowl right there and they didn't get it. And credit to the 49ers, they made plays. Lions didn't. Learn from that. Come back. Be that team next year. And, and based on what I've seen from this team, this coaching staff, this general manager, and the people he has under him, they have nothing in their mind other than taking this thing further than what it went this year he's right though you'll know what injuries are going to happen you don't know what you know ups or downs you're going to have but I'm not concerned about this team being comfortable I'm not concerned about this team having a hangover or anything like that I I feel like I know this team they just need to come back with that same fire and I believe that they will and now we need to let Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell do their things and improve that roster and come back better it's great stories, Dan. I, I know Bill Parcells is going to call Dan Campbell and remind him that the 85 Bears shut out his Giants 21 nothing to go win the Super Bowl 20, and the Giants came back the following year and beat everyone's ass and won Super Bowl 21. I really believe the Lions will win Super Bowl 59, uh, yeah, wherever the hell a, it is, in New Orleans. New Orleans there's, so, there's so many stories like yeah. that that, you know, I mean, look at Michigan, guys. Michigan, you know, got their teeth kicked in two years in a row in the playoffs. And what did they do? They just kept fighting and came back for a third year and won it all. I mean, it's sometimes it happens like that. It's not fun, but it's how you handle it that ultimately dictates where you go from there. And, I, you know, look at the character that, that, that Michigan showed in coming back and some of the guys that decided to come back just to finish that job. And that tells you something about them. I think we have a lot of guys on the Lions that are cut from that same cloth, and they will be hungry to come back just to finish it. Because when you're that close and you don't oh. get it, uh, there's two ways you can go. You can either let it get you down, or you can let it piss you off and come back ready to go. Dan, you're absolutely correct. I remember being on the 2012 Seahawks team that uh, we got close. We got to the semis, lost to the Falcons, and in the very next year, I wasn't on that team. But they won the Super Bowl, so you're absolutely close. This isn't a question. It's just to remind you that your team went 12-5. and five. They won North. They won two home playoff games this season. It was a hell of a freaking ride then, and I can't wait to see what 2024 has in store. Amen. I'm looking forward to this offseason, guys. I'm, I, I just, you know, look, that stung. It's, it was Ugh. not good. It hurt. Uh, but Still does. I'm, the, the, here's the thing we love about these games that we watch and we invest in is that you always have hope. Well, we've gone from hoping – that a six and 10 team or six and 11 team can just get good. Now we're hoping that a 12 and five team that won two playoff games and got to the NFC championship can get that much better. And that's what it's all about is, is just improving, getting better, improving from within, improving from the outside. I'm excited about this off season. Now I'm excited about guys that I trust going out and improving this roster and, and, and attacking their weaknesses. They've earned that from me. And I think they should have earned that from a lot of people around here who have watched them work 
and, and the way that they do things and let them go to work now. Let's get this thing done. Let's come back better. Not, not as good, not, but better, knowing that you need to be better. The great Dan Miller. Uh, Dan, thanks, thanks for joining Dan. us throughout the season. and uh... We'll see you next week, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> we talk about that. Talk about the Pistons and the Wings. Yeah. And talk about uh, his old March Madness week. next week. <laughs> All right, buddy. All right, thanks, Dan. Again, uh, we appreciate you guys. Phone. This was fun, man. I appreciate you guys. Love Thank you, man. You, Dan. You're the best Love in the you, business. Buddy. Absolutely, the absolute best. And again, uh, download the Fox Local app on your smart TV, Roku, Fire, uh, all that. Uh, all that on your TV. You can watch us every day, two to four, on the Fox Local app.